Stable Diffusion has a lot of folders within its directory, so let's explore some of the key folders which relate to generating art and making use of functionality within Stable Diffusion, so you can spend less time reading and more time creating. A quick shout out to the supporters over on Patreon, and do drop a like on the video, but let me give it to you bite-sized. The Outputs folder is where a copy of all of your generated images are stored, and this includes text to image, image to image, grids generated through methods like prompt matrix, and images from the Extras tab, like Upscales. This is found within the Stable Diffusion Web UI Outputs folder, and the images are stored within folders created using the name or the date the image was generated. Whenever you save or zip an image you generated, the saved files will be stored within a folder called Images. The Images folder can be found within the Stable Diffusion Web UI Log folder, and this is a handy way of archiving images and their settings so you can replicate them later. Checkpoints are a type of pre-trained model which are used to generate specific types of images based on the data used to train them. These are large files in the gigabytes intended to make large changes and you can only have one checkpoint loaded at a time. These are stored within your Stable Diffusion Web UI Models Stable Diffusion folder and you can access your desired checkpoints through the checkpoint dropdown which should be enabled by default. If you don't have it, you can enable it in Settings through the User Interface option and navigate into Quick Settings and selecting the SD underscore model underscore checkpoint before applying the settings. Here you can see me using the Dream Shaper checkpoint to generate a character, which gives us a semi-realistic art style. LoRa, which stands for Low Rank Adaption, is a model which is used for training specific concepts, which can then be used in conjunction with others through a small file to adjust images based on what it was trained on. These are stored within the Stable Diffusion Web UI Models LoRa folder and are called within your prompt. You can find your collection of LoRa's by clicking the red picture icon and navigate into the LoRa section or by adding the LoRa dropdown through your settings on the user interface and selecting SD LoRa on the quick settings dropdown. And don't forget to apply the settings. Here you can see me using a LoRa which turns any image into a Pixar style 3D representation. Textual inversion is an embedding that allows you to add new styles or capture concepts, but they operate differently on a technical level to LoRa's, as they won't modify the model when training. These are stored within your Stable Diffusion Web UI Embeddings folder and are called within your prompt. They can be accessed through the red picture icon, which will bring up your installed textual inversions. Here I'm using a textual inversion to get a similar face to Faye Grant, and it somewhat comes through, but mixes with my prompt. Hyper networks are used to modify generated images towards a specific art style or concept through fine tuning, even if the model doesn't recognize it on its own, acting as a reference trained on multiple images. These can be stored within your Stable Diffusion Web UI Models Hyper Networks folder and are added into your prompts. You can access these either through the red picture icon or through the settings under User Interface, where you can enable the SD Hyper Network Quick Setting and then hit Apply. I tried using a sticker slash chibi style hyper network, but it didn't give me the exact results, likely because I wasn't using the anything v3 checkpoint. Aesthetic gradients are embeddings that allow you to apply a certain style to your images without needing to mention the embedding within the prompt. You need to install an extension called Web UI Aesthetic Gradients by running a git clone, but this method actually duplicated the extensions folder, and it's easier to just use the extensions tab to install it the normal way. This will give you an aesthetic gradients folder within the Stable Diffusion Web UI extensions and then the folder where the extension is located where you can place your embeddings. This will also give you two additional windows, one for creating aesthetic embeddings on the tab and another for using your aesthetic embeddings called Open for Clip Aesthetic. But giving it a spin, I tried out the Fantasy and Gloom Core embeddings which came by default and you can see the results in these images. ControlNet is an extension within Stable Diffusion which allows you to add extra conditions during image generation. It allows you to provide additional inputs such as scribbles, edge maps, segmentation maps and more to guide the generative process. You can install it through the extensions tab using the URL like any other extension, but note that you will need to download and install specific models that use the .pth ending for the control modes to work. This, like any other extension, will be stored within the Stable Diffusion Web UI Extensions folder unless you've specified otherwise. I've taken this image of Harley Quinn and generated a similar head position within my own image using the Pose option. Lycoris, also known as LoRa Beyond Conventional Methods, other rank adaption implementations for Stable Diffusion, 
is another method for changing the style of generated images. This requires an additional extension, which you can install through either the extension search function or the URL method. But instead of giving you a new window, it will extend the red picture icon where your embeddings are located. You should also note that the models won't be stored in the extensions folder, but rather through the Stable Diffusion Web UI Models Lycoris folder location. I opted to use the NVQ mix, which was supposed to give me a sticker like chibi design, but obviously it blended with my checkpoint for a more painted aesthetic. An upscaler is a model trained to restore details in degraded or low resolution images at the cost of often increasing the file size. The upscalers are located in a variety of folders, but typically you want to store yours in the Stable Diffusion Web UI Models SGAN folder, considering most models follow the architecture. You can then select your preferred model through the drop downs in areas like the high res fix or extras tab. I've gone ahead and upscaled my image with the full X ultra sharp for a higher resolution image, which has removed some of that pixelation. A VAY or variable auto encoder is a file that can be added to stable diffusion to improve the quality of generated images. And VAYs can bring more vibrant colors, sharper details or improved anatomy to generated outputs, but may worsen results on some checkpoints. The VAYs are stored in Stable Diffusion Web UI Models VAY folder and can be booted up through two locations. You can add the VAY as a drop down called SD underscore VAY under the user interface section or choose a VAY under the Stable Diffusion section of the settings. I've generated some images using the VAYs so you can see it in action, but my checkpoint is pretty good so it wasn't really needed. Extensions of additional features of the Automatic One Stable Diffusion Web UI that makes it easier to use scripts or add new functionalities. There are many you can install, either through the URL or by searching for them via the index, and they are saved within the Stable Diffusion Web UI extensions folder and enabled in the extension section. But to wrap things up, hopefully this video has helped you figure out where some of the more commonly used functionality is stored, so you can confidently navigate to your desired files. Do consider subscribing and supporting over on Patreon to help this channel grow and a massive thank you to everyone as we near 2000 subscribers. This is Bite Size Genius and I hope you enjoyed.